So you can see how tight some of the roads are here. Anyway, it's around the corner here on the right hand side. You'll see a shed full of what we call the peat and turf. And uh, so I'll tell you more about it later, but just so you get a mental picture of your head on top of it. See the shed full of there on the right hand side. But that's all being hand cut there, see it on the right. That's all being hand cut and it's a source of fuel here for the open fires. Now guys, back in the uh, 5th century, the Irish were actually making raids over to England and kidnapping young people and bringing them back here to Ireland and basically put them into slavery. And one young man that kidnapped in Wales was a man called Patrick. He was brought over here to Ireland and he was put to work on a pig farm. He spent a number of years on this pig farm and then he managed to escape and make his way back over to England. And when he was back over in England, he claimed that he had a vision from Jesus Christ to come back over here to Ireland and convert the pagan Irish into Christians. So when he came back over, he thought it would be a good idea to start with the High King. If he got the High King converted, then it would be easier to get his subjects converted, and his subjects being the Irish people. And the High King at the time was a man called King Leary. And King Leary was housed in a place called Royal Tara, which was the inauguration site of the High Kings here in Ireland. And Patrick went down to Royal Tara and he eventually got an audience with King Leary. And when he did, he used the shamrock, the tree leaf clover, to explain the Holy Trinity. And the Holy Trinity being three people in the one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And King Leary was so impressed with Patrick that he gave him permission to convert his subjects, the Irish people. But because he was a pagan high king, he decided not to convert himself. Now St. Patrick is our great saint here in Ireland, and the shamrock, the tree leaf clover, is our national symbol. And then after that, then, uh, these Christian communities started appearing around the country. And uh, these Christian communities were run by the monks, the monks were very, very self-sufficient here in Ireland, very much involved in agriculture, very much involved in the arts and crafts and jewellery design and jewellery manufacturing and wood carving and stone based towers to go to straight the business. Now guys, sometimes we get an audio-visual here. I can't promise it because it's only sometimes. If we do, we'll look good. But guys, we're going to spend an hour now at this site. But the entrance, guys, is straight in front of us. You go straight up there, turn left, and just hang on there at reception. Sure. We're at the grounds of uh, St. Curon uh, Christian uh, Center. Um, here it is. We're going to take a little tour. So uh, let's go. Some old ruins. And that's the uh, Shannon River over there, right? Shannon River, longest river, they say, in Ireland. Stein. Nicht? Da wurde dann der Kalkstein dazu gebracht. 
Und in dieser Wohnung wurde als Flüsterbuch erwähnt. Denn wenn man hier etwas hineinflüstert, Graves. <laughs> 